a sunburn, or what they're now calling a massive solar storm could send us to a post-apocalyptic stone age. Good news, we escaped it in 2012. Bad news, it may be hitting us again in 2022. But don't you fret, the space weather forecast would give us some time to prepare. Or maybe not. Whatever it is, it's definitely scary. In today's video, we'll tell you everything you need to know about this phenomenon. Keep watching. Starting off with the solar flare of 2012 that almost destroyed everything. Thing, even if you didn't see it, feel it, heard about it, or even read about it in the newspapers, Earth was almost knocked back to the Stone Age in 2012. No, it wasn't some crazed dictator with his finger on the big red thermonuclear button or a giant asteroid that came incredibly close to wiping out modern civilization as we know it. Though what nearly ended us was a massive solar flare. Our most bounteous celestial body, the Sun, unleashed one of the largest solar flares and coronal mass injections ever recorded 10 years ago. And luckily for us, it missed our Mother Earth by a whisker. Had it actually happened, we'd still be picking up the pieces. Here's what would have actually happened if the storm had hit the planet. The extreme solar storm would have resulted in three waves of damage. First, the solar flare's X-rays and ultraviolet radiation would have caused radio blackouts and GPS navigation errors. We would see satellites being fried in the second part by energetic particles such as electrons and protons that arrived only minutes to hours later. And finally, magnetized plasma from the CME would have hit our planet the following day. Because most urban areas use electric water pumps, power outages could have been disastrous, making it difficult to even flush the toilet. So you can say that it would have completely devastated whatever we know of our civilization. This wouldn't only stop you from using your computer for daily tasks, but it would also bring down most of the systems that make our world run as we know it. Luckily, we had a close call because back in 2012, the CME me pass through Earth's orbit. And lucky, had it actually happened just a week earlier, our planet would have been in the way, and we'd be faced with some pretty serious technological consequences. So thank whatever god you believe in, because if it wasn't for this, you probably wouldn't be browsing the internet right now. And it would have had an equally bad economic effect. Had the flare hit us, the total economic impact of a solar storm in 2012 is estimated to be around $2 trillion, or 20 times the cost of Hurricane Katrina. But it's not just about money. That's still somewhat easy to recover had things gone back on track instantly. The thing is, repairing the world's power grid would have taken a lot of time. You can't just magically replace dozens of massive transformers and substations around the world. Maybe the first world would have done it sooner, but the developing countries would have been pushed far behind and it would literally be a Stone Age scenario. Plus, there were only so many diesel generators available to fill the void. Large parts of society would be without power for months or even years if a massive solar storm strikes the Earth. So here's how it works. A solar storm is basically a broad term for increased solar activity. In this case, the July 2012 solar storm consisted of a massive solar flare, followed by a massive coronal mass ejection, which is a large cloud of blazing plasma sent into the atmosphere. It's caused by the sudden release of energy stashed in the sun's core, causing the sun's plasma to heat up to tens of millions of degrees, accelerating and kicking out all kinds of of radiation, and often creating a solar prominence or eruption. In a large solar storm, the same coronal energy can cause a coronal mass ejection, which is a much slower moving billion ton cloud of plasma. To sum it up, it's bad news if the energy and plasma from a large solar flare or CME hit the Earth. We mean it's exactly what it sounds like. Much like a man-made electromagnetic pulse weapon, solar energetic particles strike the Earth with such force that they ionize the atmosphere, creating a vast cloud cloud of energetic electrons that bounce around inside the atmosphere, destroying electronics and fusing conductive wires everywhere. It would almost certainly destroy a few satellites in Earth's orbit as well. And it has happened once. Before the 2012 flare, the Carrington event of 1859 is said to be the largest recorded storm. A massive solar flare and CME suddenly hit the Earth, destroying much of Europe and North America's Victorian telegraph network. The 2012 flare was roughly twice as large as the one that caused caused the Quebec blackout. But we escaped unharmed thanks to the vastness of space and the Earth's relatively large orbital distance. While it did hit some satellites in our orbit, we're super lucky we escaped it. But fortunately for science, the July 2012 solar flare and CME did hit NASA's Stereo satellite. NASA's Stereo A spacecraft, one of a twin NASA pair of satellites examining the sun, has provided researchers with information about the severity of the space weather. It's this satellite 
that discovered that the magnitude of the flare was comparable to the Carrington event. The blast had no effect on Stereo 8 because it was outside the Earth's magnetosphere, a zone above our planet that carries magnetic currents and can short out satellites. Plus, unlike some others, the satellite was designed to withstand solar shocks. The good bit is that thanks to these twin satellites and many others that are orbiting our planet right now, we know when it's going to strike. The bad news? It might happen again. More than 150 years ago, the largest geomagnetic storm in recorded history took place. We are now entering another period of solar maximum, so you can pretty much expect another massive solar flare. Ah oh, man, as if a pandemic wasn't enough already. As we approach a solar maximum, which is when we see the greatest period of solar activity every 11 years or so, expect the next few years to be blazing with activity. This might also be a good time for another big solar flare to hit us. It'll be a chance to see how well our safety measures and precautions can deal with this influx of solar particles. But don't hold your breath. A study published in 2019 found the possibility of a Carrington-like event happening before 2029 is less than 1.9 percent. But there are going to be a few minor ones, such as the solar flare soon approaching in the coming weeks. If you live near the Arctic or Antarctic circles, you may see some stunning northern or southern lights over the next two days, and the Earth may experience minor geomagnetic effects. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the United States categorizes solar storms into five levels of intensity, G1 to G5. The G represents the geomagnetic effects caused by the plasma cloud. Level 5 represents a significant effect, while level 1 indicates a minor effect. So according to NOAA, the current solar storm is classified as G1. Most people will miss it, and only a few will recognize it as a dazzling natural spectacle. Also, some preventative measures have been taken to ensure it isn't that bad. The event isn't going to be a massive one, but in case it's in the higher categories, power companies have incorporated safety features such as trip wires into the electricity grid to prevent descending failure. If power increases too quickly, these trip wires are programmed to turn off, limiting damage and preventing transformers from burning out, as they did in 1989. But since we now have solar flares of a new kind, according to scientists, the ones that strike without a warning, we're not sure how prepared we are for the event. Also, before you empty tubs of your sunscreen and retreat into your basements, it isn't harmful to humans. If it wasn't for the ionosphere and magnetic field, these solar emissions from the sun could cause dangerous radiation exposure to living beings. So, you're safe, but your gadgets aren't. Also, there's a bright side, even though there isn't much. Not everything about the solar flare would be negative, though. When these events occur, the density of the Earth's upper atmosphere increases, so the atmosphere rises in altitude for a brief period. This can have an impact on satellite orbits, potentially causing problems, but it can also have an impact on the orbits of space debris floating around up there. The extra drag may cause this debris to fall into orbit and burn up. So you can say that it won't be all that bad. When we are inevitably hit by a large solar event, the resulting geomagnetic storm that wipes out most of Earth's electronic systems will also produce some stunning aurorae. Did you know that while the Carrington event was pretty destructive, it was so powerful that the northern lights could be seen as far south as Cuba, and the southern lights could be seen as far north as Queensland, Australia. Well, at least the anarchic, post-apocalyptic Earth will have a nice backdrop. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think the solar flare will hit Earth sometime soon? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. See you in the next one.